pleasure to be here. You know, at this point, I feel like I've uh, listened to several of my colleagues, and I feel like everything that has to be said has been said, except not everybody has said it. So I agree with everything that I heard from all my colleagues who spoke. And I'm a senior member of the Foreign Affairs Committee now. I've been in Congress for 23 years. And the last time, of course, we, we passed the um, Armenian Genocide Resolution by one vote. So I want to take full credit for it. That one vote was mine. <laughs> said it. The past is very important because you learn to prevent things in the future from what happened in the past. Little did we know that we're now in the 21st century and genocide, unfortunately, is still raging around the world. But what's equally as bad as the actual genocide that's committed is the denial of the genocide that's committed. I took a trip to Turkey a couple of years ago on my way back from uh, Iraq. And I met with the Prime Minister and the President of Turkey. And the first thing they said to me, and I was leading the trip because Congressman Skelton, who was the Chairman of the Armed Services Committee, had taken ill and he asked me to lead the trip. And the first thing the President, Prime Minister of Turkey said to me was, how could you vote for the Armenian Genocide? First thing they, moved, they said to me, before anything, and I said to him, why don't you just tell the truth and admit that the genocide happened and move on? I want to thank the, the Armenian uh, National Committee as well. And I want to tell you the remark that was alluded to that I made was many of us, some of us, had a meeting with the foreign minister of Turkey. And we raised the Armenian genocide, or at least I raised the Armenian genocide. And of course, he denied everything. And it was at a time several months ago where there was a lot of contention between the Turks and, and Israel. And you remember that flotilla incident. So he got up and he talked about Israel going into Gaza to protect its citizens from being bombarded. He talked about Israel issuing an apology for the flotilla incident. And then he talked about occupation, Israel occupation. And I said to him, you know, Mr. Foreign Minister, I'm going to be very undiplomatic, but I find it rather hypocritical on your part. And he looked at me, I guess you don't use those words in, in diplomacy. And I said to him, Turkey feels free to go into Iraq and go after who they regard as terrorists, Kurdish terrorists. But you would deny Israel the right to do the same thing. I said, you talk about occupations. Turkey has been occupying the northern part of Cyprus since 1974. And yet you talk about occupation. And I said, you talk about Turkey wants an apology? I'm still waiting for Turkey to apologize to the Armenian people. I, I too am a Jewish American. And I grew up after World War II, but was taught by my family about the Holocaust, the Nazi Holocaust. And it's a part of me that some part of me will always be a part of me. And so should the Armenian Genocide. When people are slaughtered, men, women, and children, and then to deny what happened adds insult to injury. And so I want to commend all of you for being here. First of all, letting the victims, telling the victims and the families of the victims that we will never forget them. Making sure that we stay true to our principles so that every time genocide rears its ugly head, we know that we will have confronted it. And finally, I want to promise you 
that I will not rest until the United States Congress on the floor finally acknowledges the genocide and the President of the United States acknowledges the genocide and that all of us will say what happened to the Armenian people back in 1915 should never ever again happen to any people. Thank you and God bless you.